again, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. This is yet another segment of Mail Call where I can answer your questions face to face, where nothing gets lost in translation, trading emails back and forth. Uh, I hate wasting your time, so let's get this started. Before we get the questions rolling, uh, I'd like to thank Steve from Car Smart Radio. That's ESPN Radio 610. Uh, he invited me for his one-year anniversary. We filled an hour segment on a show on the basics of detailing. I did put that on my social media account, so if you're not following me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, follow me, Apex Detail, Apex Auto Detail, and you'll become alerted when we have special events like that planned. Uh, for those that missed we're going to upload it again as a podcast, and I'll put it on the channel. We do cover a lot of bases when it comes to the basics of detailing, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of important information there. So to get this started, the first question has to do with imperfections and scratches and scrapes on windshields, and what can be removed and what can't be polished out of them. Uh, that, that's a great question, question of the day, because there are, just for an example, some imperfections you can remove, light scrapes from, say you used the wrong media to clean your windshield, like steel wool, or maybe a razor blade, or maybe the frame of the wiper was scraping on the windshield as the rubber wore away. Some of that can be removed and polished, and I did give a couple examples using the CarPro Sarah Glass. Uh, liquids and, and polish pads to remove that. However, I'm not going to spend a ton of time polishing and, and raising the heat on the windshield area because it's a laminate. There are three layers of that windshield, sometimes more if it's custom. You have an outer, outer piece of glass, an inner piece of glass, and then a film in the middle that is UVA, UVB protection, a little bit of tint. And if you're hovering over one area trying to remove uh, an imperfection and you're raising heat in that area where the rest of the windshield is room temperature, remember you can um, distort that film and you'll never get that uh, vision out of the front of your windshield back again once it's distorted. So I'll only go so far, far and then I will uh, steer the customer to get his windshield replaced because in normal policies they'll give you one replacement. Uh, OEM, and then after that, it's going to have to be, um, you know, either with a deductible or aftermarket. Ben Runkle wants to know what do I do with a car after it's cured? Do I have room to store it or do I put it outside? I try to keep it inside when I can, uh, especially if it's some of the concentrated coatings that uh, on a humid day it needs the infrared lights. I have two bays where I can let them sit, and, and the third one is uh, to, to get the next one started and work on it. Uh, I actually can send cars on its way with some of the coatings that I apply, the concentrated coatings, within four hours of coating it. If I know it's going to be a nice evening, uh, low humidity, and uh, normally the next day is going to be nice, I'll send it. The customer can come pick it up. If it's going to be uh, a humid day, hot day, sometimes I'll leave um, you know, the car in there for 24 to 48 hours or use an infrared light just as long as you're not washing the car within that first 10-day period. So this is how they start to cure. They cure um, right after you apply it to about 85% cured within the first 24 to 48 hours. Then after that, it really slows down from 85% to 100% cure, and it takes the next 7 to 10 days, depending on the coating. So as long as you're not washing it with a surfactant or a shampoo, it can get wet, it can go out in the snow, it can go out in the rain, and it will be perfectly fine. Okay, next, Brockman Deal. I recently applied uh, Seal and Shine to my truck, and I want to apply one more layer. It's been a couple months uh, before wintertime to put some added protection on there. What do I do? Do I remove the old layer altogether, and how do I do that? Okay, depends how long the first layer was on there. If it's been on there for a while and it's rather degraded, um, decon and, and clean it as usual, wash, decontaminate it, clay it if needed, and only where it's needed. If you have to, put a plastic bag over your hand and feel where, you know, there's bonded contaminants and remove them where it's needed. And if it's a, a coating of seal and shine that's been on there for a while and it's sort of decaying and it's at the end of its life cycle, you can use an IPA solution. I don't go any stronger than 12, 12.5%. 12 
um, you can go a little bit stronger if you need to, if it's a, a fresh coating of seal and shine. And uh, another thing that I use uh, is Eastwood paint prep. This re removes silicone, waxes, old sealants. I'll try to put a link down below if I can remember to do that. And then I'll flush immediately after. Sometimes I use Citral 266 flush immediately after. It all depends on how long that's been on there and, and what's left of the sealant or the wax that you want to remove. Um, and like I said, you were talking about claying it, clay only where it's needed. If you clay, you're going to have to polish. It doesn't matter what's on there. Coating, uh, naked clear coat, it's going to abrade whatever you clay because most modern clay now has um, three different levels of abrasiveness. Okay, next, another great question. Joseph Via has a problem with static, with his microfiber towels, and there's two ways to get rid of that. Number one, there are towels you can order that are made. Um, they are manufactured to be anti-static. And the second one is to let your microfiber towels air dry instead of being in the dryer after the washer. Low heat, and if, if that's not an option, you can throw them in the dryer low heat and before they are completely dry, a little bit damp, bring them out and let them air dry either wherever your washroom is or maybe out in the porch or just fold them up and, and put them on a shelf and let them air dry the rest of the way. They're just only going to be a little damp. But you're going to find that that makes a huge difference when it comes to static, uh, when you're um, going to protect your car and having, having it attract dust before you lay down protection. Yeah, I know that can be a pain. Those are two ways to take care of that. All right, next, Ron Shopes wants to know about fallout remover and is it harmful for plastic trim? I got to tell you, the modern plastic trim in these cars is getting cheesier and cheaper and you really need to take care of them and watch out for it. But most of the iron removers are going to be okay on those surfaces. Remember, clear coat is a form of plastic. It's just a little bit of a different form than the plastic trim. So you can dilute the areas where you're going to be uh, spraying for ferrous metals that are near some of the new modern plastic trim. Or if you get it on the plastic trim, don't panic. Just flush the area immediately after. Okay, Jeff Durham has a question more on the mechanical side, which we do cover here sometimes. What do I use to break loose really tight nuts and bolts? And I've actually shown that on the 74 Corvette Stingray barn find restoration. The Schaefer's Penetral 90, it's pricey compared to WD-40, but it's the anti-corrosion properties of this formula that I like and have no problem paying extra for. All right, next, uh, WD Harper wants to know, this is similar to one of the questions at the beginning of, beginning of the video. He has turtle wax seal and shine. He wants to remove that and get it ready for, get the area prepped and naked for the new hybrid solutions. I'll tell you, seal and shine is still going to be a beast. Don't worry about it. You know, if you just put that on there, let it do its job. And when it's starting to break down in a couple months, um, an easy way to remove that then will be an IP solution. And uh, if that doesn't work, you can use the Eastwood that we went over earlier. And if that doesn't work, you can use a very fine cleaner polish, Megs 83 or some of the other ones, uh, and a very uh, non-aggressive foam polishing pad. Just quickly go over it and that will remove it quickly without harming your clear coat or removing any of your clear coat. All right, next from Just, he wants to know what shampoo I recommend for hand washes. And well, the first one's gonna be one that's um, readily known from, from my channel anyways, CarPro Reset. No dyes, no frills, hardly any scent. It just straight up cleans, no gloss enhancers. No carnauba, no polymers in there. It does just what I wanted to do, and that's clean. And here's another one that does that. It does have a crazy purple color. The dye's not going to hurt anything, and I know it's just for marketing, but it's just so useless to me. Just clear, no scent. Just let it clean and foam up. This one does that. It just has the crazy purple color and smells like blueberries. Okay, Dave wants to know what are the highest gloss readings on the channel and what were they? Well, there were a couple within a tenth or a hundredth of a gloss unit of each other in no particular order. Technician's Choice, uh, Tech 582, Kingsguard, the one we just reviewed was up there. Bead Maker was up there for quite some time. Tax System Shiny Wax really spiked the gloss meter as well as their rinseless wash. And also, as a quick detailer, guys, they don't last very long, but for a quick shot of gloss, the Extreme Solutions Mist and Wipe did a very good job. 
So, uh, readings of 101, they don't get much higher than that. Um, uh, 97 to 100, absolutely fantastic off the charts. Uh, 92 to 96, uh, well above average, and anything in the 90s is, is incredible and will just stand out from the, any car that you have parked near yours anyways. All right, that's going to do it for this segment of Mail Call. Keep those questions rolling in. I will keep catching up with the questions. Questions are fantastic, by the way. Um, they, they're awesome. So I will supply an email link down below where you can send those questions. Until the next video, guys, be safe, and I'll catch you in the next one. And if you are enjoying the content, find it useful, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. That'll let you know when we have new videos for you.